Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Kimbara Zoo. Today we're doing a speed build of an aviary for the red crowned cranes, or the Japanese cranes as they're also called. And I really just thought they were the perfect animals to do next since we just started branching out our zoo with a Japanese inspired section. So this episode is mainly a plain speed build video, so we're not gonna focus on the rest of the zoo today, only on getting our cranes in. And I did get some great feedback from you guys in my previous episode of some changes we should make to the zoo. And I also haven't forgotten about your name suggestions for the um, building with the Komodo dragons, but hopefully we're going to fix all of that stuff in the next episode. For now, let's get started on the aviary. So since we're doing a round shaped aviary here, we're going to get a lot of help from the grid. So therefore we only really have to focus on making the first wall that we're later just going to duplicate all around. So while I'm making a template for the aviary here, I thought I should explain a bit of why we're doing an aviary for these ones, because in a lot of suits you'll actually see them roaming free in a regular habitat. And while the cranes don't really have a real flying animation in the game, I think it's important to note that they actually do fly in real life. So when you see the cranes in a regular habitat in zoos, that's usually because they've used some form of flight restraint on the animals, which I truly just can't and won't support, as I find it pretty unethical. And the flight restraint can be done by clipping or trimming their feathers, or it can be done surgically, where they either sort of alter or remove certain part of the wing area, like tendons or the wing bones, and this can result in both chronic pain and inflammation, not to mention you're giving the bird a disability because they are meant to fly. And I really just don't think it's our place to take that away from them. Because like, if you think of it this way, even if you technically don't need all of your fingers or toes to survive or function, I'm just going to assume you would still like to keep all of them intact. And I kind of see it the same way for the bird's ability to fly, so therefore it just seems more ethical to me to put them in a large aviary so that we don't need to do any flight restraint and they can hypothetically fly around as much as they want to. So there you have it. And I don't know if you like hearing some real life facts or my opinions on ethics when it comes to zoos, but I really find it all kind of interesting and absolutely love to educate myself on these topics. So just feel free to let me know if you want more or less of that sort of input. But anyways, I've actually never used the mesh pieces before, which is kind of weird because I know there are a lot of people's favorite pieces in the game, but I think it's just that I haven't built too many typical backstage areas and I've also never made an aviary before either. So now we're finally getting familiar with the mesh pieces and let's just say me and the mesh pieces we don't get along. It was such a struggle to get everything to line up properly and look nice. And that's probably just because we're doing a bit of an atypical shape here. So connecting these uh, squared pieces properly without having anything poke out and stuff just ended up taking a lot of time. So I don't blame the mesh, but we're just really not that good friends after this. I also found it a bit challenging to get the wood pieces to lay just right so that they would perfectly connect when we duplicate them in a circle. So yeah, uh, even if we're just doing a single wall piece here, it surprisingly did take quite a bit of time to get everything right. But I am really happy I took the time to do it properly though, because I didn't really have too high expectations of how this would turn out since, like I said, I've never made aviaries before and things don't always go perfectly when you try something new for the first time, but I'm genuinely so happy with the results. I think it actually ends up being my favorite build at the moment and it gets pretty large in the end as well, so I'm really curious to hear what you think of it when we're done. So what we're doing now is moving over to another circular building, because we're actually going to connect three different buildings into one here, and they will all have different heights so that we get some nice contrast between them. And this one is going to be the lowest, where we are going to have a staff room and an animal keeper's hut for our employees. I keep forgetting to place down staff facilities, so I'm trying my best to get better at remembering to integrate them in my builds right from the start. That's why we also added the one-sided glass under the window pieces for the roof here, because it just probably wouldn't turn out too pretty with a view straight into this building with the ugly staff buildings. My plan was also that it could work as a shelter for the animals, so I was going to put down bedding for them to sleep on in there, but apparently they don't 
need or use beddings. I had to search it up and apparently they sleep standing up, sometimes even on just one leg, so that's pretty cool. I don't really think they need this shelter area either, but they at least have access to it if they feel like stepping away from the people for a bit. And this is also the building I end up uh, putting the habitat entrance in initially, but I moved it later off camera because while the cranes could come and go without any issues, the hitbox just wasn't large enough for the staff to actually enter the habitat to feed them and clean it and stuff, so it doesn't stay there. I just feel like I've been trying really hard to uh, step out of my comfort zone and try new stuff for the past episodes. You know, with the restaurant habitat for the Komodo dragons, the playground we did last time, and now the aviary here. I've never made stuff like this before and I just think it's so fun to be creative like this and not having to limit myself to the things I'm already confident about. And I really do have you guys to thank for that because seeing the channel grow, getting comments and feedback from you guys, and just hearing that you actually find me creative and like my builds, that just gives me so much inspiration and motivation to keep pushing my limits and step out of my comfort zone. I'm always a bit scared I'll mess it up, but I'm trying to integrate more of a so what kind of attitude, if that makes sense. Like, so what if it doesn't turn out good? At least I tried and I probably learned something in the process as well. It's kind of scary when you know something is being posted online and people get to judge you and stuff, but you guys have all been so kind and sweet with your feedback and that just makes it so much easier to get comfortable with everything. So just truly thank you so much for that. But for the inside of the building here, I guess I put somewhat of an effort to make it not look completely horrible, but it also doesn't look appealing or pretty in any sort of way. I guess I took kind of a small shortcut for this one. People aren't really going to be looking inside of this either way. And I do want to get better at making real backstage areas later. This is not the time and place because we don't have enough space. Yeah, that was horrible. I promise I'll never make an accidental rhyme again, but it's true. The building barely has enough room to fit our staff buildings, so putting down some small props wouldn't really make that big of a difference. So after I place down the walls and trims, as well as the fences to separate the animals from the buildings. I just kind of moved on to the next part of the aviary. And I think it's funny how plans change along the way, at least with me, because things almost never turn out the way I expected to or intended to. I've seen a lot of YouTubers that plan everything in advance, like they draw out a sketch of the entire zoo on paper and stuff, but I am terrible with planning ahead. So I kind of just take it step by step as I go along and so the plan was at first to only have the first aviary circle you saw me make but then I remembered we needed staff buildings so then I made the second one and then I felt it was too small and that there was something missing so then I made another part and I probably never would have thought to make it like this if I had planned ahead because I can't really visualize that well and I truly admire the people who can but my brain just doesn't work like that. I have to kind of see what's going on right in front of me in order to process it and figure out what I want to do with it. And surprisingly enough, a lot of the time it doesn't end up terrible, even though there is a serious lack of planning. But yeah, you can kind of see everything is coming together a bit now, so before we get to decorating the habitat, we're just gonna get our animals in and see that everything is working as it should. Okay, so I think we're gonna try to get our uh, red crowned cranes into this habitat right now, so let's uh, check the market. Okay, we only have four here, so I guess we'll just have to take what we have here, because we need four of them. There has to be minimum four and then I believe we could have up to 79 or something. It was a lot of cranes and we're not gonna do that many, but let's at least take the ones we have here. Oh, right. I already forgot we're supposed to put them in the quarantine before we put them into the habitats. There we go. While that's going, I think we actually had our panda baby, so maybe we should uh, check on that one. Oh, look at the little face. Oh, he's so fluffy and cute. Wait, is it a boy or a girl, actually? It is a girl, okay. Wow, here they come. I've never had these animals before, so I'm so excited to see them. Oh my gosh, you are amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, another one. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, we're still missing one here. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, they can't actually get through the opening here. That's very good. I was afraid they were too tall, so I would have to redo it, but there's no issues here. That's perfect. Uh, I'm loving this. Do we have any escape routes? 
No, we do not. And currently they can move over the entire area. So it's working as it should. We got plenty of space, as you can see, like way too much. But I just thought since we can have up to almost 80 of these guys, maybe we should just do a bunch of them. That would be really cool. But yeah, now that we have these guys in here and can see that everything is working properly, I'm just gonna continue finishing this. So I'll get started on that and then I'll see you when we're done. So from here on out, we're mainly just going to focus on decoration and foliage. And you also saw me build this pool with the barriers earlier. And that was initially just meant to be aesthetical so that I could make a waterfall. Because I didn't think the cranes would actually be able to use it or get up there. But turns out they can. It was a problem at first because I had connected the pool barrier to the habitat barrier. So every time they jumped into the pool to have a swim, the game would register it as if the animal had escaped. So they kept having to emerge emergency capture it and put them in boxes and stuff. So the way I solved it was by disconnecting the barriers and making them two separate sections. And after that, the cranes have been able to use it freely without any escape alerts. I also struggled a bit with the plant coverage here because the red crowned cranes really didn't want too many plants in their habitat. So I had to be very selective in the end with where the plants should go. And like you may have noticed, I often like to use grass along a large part of my habitats because I think it helps a lot with making it feel more natural and appealing. So I did that at first here as well, but ended up cutting it out of the video as the grass took up all the plant coverage they needed. So we just ended up deleting everything either way. But yeah, while we finish up here, I'm going to leave you with some music and then we'll do some cinematics of the final result when we're done.
so we're finally done. And like I said, I'm really curious to hear what you all think of this. I'm pretty happy with it myself and of course it will look even better once we add some foliage and decoration along the side of the path and just make everything connect a bit better. But yeah, I'm also really surprised with how much I actually liked the red ground cranes. As I'm not really a bird person, but I found them to be really cool actually, so I'm definitely not disappointed. And if you want to share your own zoo creations or just hang out with some cool people, make sure to join our Discord server with the link in the description. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!